This places a special responsibility on us, individually and collectively, in the development of our dear nation, Ghana. Number two, keep in mind that the engineering career is a journey that must be traveled throughout your life, just like the acquisition of knowledge that I have uh, often talked about. I say there are four distinct states. First state is what I call the conscious incompetence. When you don't know that you don't know, then you are in the state of uh, unconscious incompetence. Conscious incompetence comes when you become aware of your shortcomings and therefore resolve to do something about it. Conscious competence, when you have to work hard at it to consistently maintain competence. And the ultimate, the nirvana, is what we call unconscious competence. When you become a master of the trade and competence comes effortlessly. From your admission to the uh, graduate member class to when you decided to apply for corporate membership, you moved into the state of conscious incompetence. And with the conferment of membership today, you will move into the state of conscious competence. Know that to aspire to move into the state of unconscious competence, know that the ultimate is to move you into the state of unconscious competence. That will come with years of practice, additional training and experience, continuous professional development, i.e. seminars, workshops, and so on, uh, training in essential non-engineering disciplines, such as accounting, management, marketing, and skills development, such as report writing, negotiations, communication skills, training of subordinates. These will help your professional journey and the attainment of that elevated state of unconscious competence. Know that engineering, number three, know that engineering is increasingly a team sport. It's an activity where multiple disciplines are required to come together to fashion a solution that is sustainable. That is also the mechanism that helps us to transform. That's also the mechanism that helps us to transform from what I call individual excellence to group excellence. And that is also the same mechanism that helps us to move from smart individuals to smart institutions. And these are critical for the national development. A group of self-centered, brilliant individuals would not move a country forward. On that score, it is important to become an active member of the engineering community. Resolve to serve on one or more of the various committees of the institution. Also, constantly remember that the fall of one engineering practitioner brings us all down. We should therefore strive to help other members of the profession. Nevertheless, we must constructively critique the performance of our colleagues because this is what will be to the betterment of the profession. Number four, pay attention to professional practice and ethics. Without that, the credibility that is indispensable for us to reach society will not materialize. Indeed, the credibility of the GHIE rests largely on the integrity of engineering practitioners and how well they perform their tasks. Number five, become an engineering evangelist. You need to join the engineering community under the leadership of the GHIE to actively promote public awareness of the need for engineering and technology in all aspects of national activity and in particular to promote the active use of engineering and technology professionals at the local level, i.e. the district assemblies, the municipal assemblies, and so on. Remember that uh, examples such as the transformation of uh, uh, countries like Korea. Korea was transformed from a beggar aid recipient nation whose per capita income was only $67 in 1953 to a donor country, now they give us aid, with over 
30,000 US dollars uh, today is largely the result of the judicious application of engineering. And we should always use this as an example. The story is the same for countries such as uh, Singapore, the Asian Tigers, and so on and so forth. You must therefore help to make engineering practitioners a much stronger voice and active participants in the technological development of the nation and be a conscience of the nation in matters relating to science and technology. Finally, help to generate interest in engineering in the young, especially females, at the lower levels of the educational system. Number six, and final one, Strive to be in leadership in your community and in the country at large. And again here, I'd like to give the example that China and other successful developing countries have developed technical people. They have deployed technical people, especially engineering practitioners, in leadership positions. And in fact, there was a time when eight out of the nine top leadership positions in China were all engineering practitioners. Don't be shy of becoming part of the political process and aiming to be in the cabinet, in the parliament, in municipal assemblies, in district assemblies, heads of agencies, and so on. Hold firm the belief that regardless of political affiliation, engineering practitioners will make good leaders. And I expect to see many of you show up in the leadership of the country. For the, for the inductees, let me add my welcome to you into the engineering community and entreat you to enjoy your new status, but constantly be conscious of the responsibility that it entails. Because if we, the engineers, don't assume leadership in the country, guess what? We are not going to go anywhere. Thank you. So, inductees, you're in trouble. You have a lot on your plate. Let me see if I can just highlight a few. You are, you, right now, you are consciously incompetent. Hey, no. Yes, consciously competent. So you're going to have to move into unconscious competence. Is that right? Okay, so it means there's a lot of work ahead for you. And it means that no sleeping. No resting on your oars and think, oh, I now have an ING in front of my name. That's it. There's a lot of work ahead and you need each other. You need each other and everybody else who is in the fraternity of engineering. And ethics has to rule. Don't try to do anything thinking, oh, I can get away with this. You have to be ethical in what you're doing. I won't take his shine. Thank you very much, Dr. Boache, for those words of inspiration. We will continue, but I'd like to acknowledge the presence of some of our past presidents who joined us later after we started. Um, Engineer Asari Abwa, Sir Akwabwa. I didn't want to miss out this sir. Thank you for your presence. So at this point, I would invite our guest of honor to share a few words with us. Engineer Kwesi Kwakwa. He is a fellow of the Institution of Engineers and the 41st president. This was from 2010 to 2011, if my memory serves me right. He was there when I was inducted into the institution. He has a BSc in civil engineer and engineering and an MSc also in civil engineering. He I wouldn't mention the age, but he has also worked for a very, very long time, longer than I have been alive. <laughs> and he's worked in Ghana and other African countries. He worked with the Associated Consultants until he retired. Um, he was the Chief Executive Officer, and he's currently serving on the Board of Directors for the organization. Um, Engineer Kwakwa, would you like to join us here? and share a few words with our inductees and everyone else here present. Please welcome him. Oh, it's great to see 
these big numbers come in. It shows that the engineering institution will have a future. Our chairman, engineer Mrs. Carlin Bulchedid, members of the Council of the Institution of Engineers, the Executive Secretary, Mr. George Isando, IPP, Dr. Engineer Kwame Buachi, and his, his other name is Coach. You know, he's, he's helped a lot of us either singularly or as a company. And I think you should give me a hand. <laughs> Past presidents, members of our August institution, and I mean you guys sitting down here. You are now members, so I'm not going to call you inductees. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, why you should join the Ghana Institution of Engineers and also stay active as a member. I must start by accepting the position of guest of honor. And I must say I'm very grateful for this honor done me. First, let me congratulate you all for becoming members of the Ghana Institution of Engineers. The youngest among you might have spent about three years after graduation, while others might have spent a longer period, wondering whether it is even worth it to become a member. Whichever route you took, you have taken to this point, I should say, are you cool? The badge that will be pinned, oh, that you have on your chest, is yours. You have earned it, so wear it with pride. Also use your stamp with pride, but on jobs that you have the capa capability to handle. <laughs> For all the well wishes who have accompanied you, the new members, I say thank you on their behalf. Your toil, if you're a parent, a sibling, family member, a partner or a spouse, a friend or a friend of a friend. You need to clap for some spending time to accompany them here. Your time has been well spent. Take photographs so that you can remember this unique day. It will never come back again. You begin to wonder whether you've done the right thing. I can assure you that you have surely done the right thing. If you are a lady, then you should be proud that you have received a handshake, you will receive a handshake from the first lady president of the Ghana Institution of Engineers. It shows that one day in the near future, you can also be a president. Every member here is a potential president. And I can assure you that that will be a great achievement. All of you should also remember, you know, use this day as a point in your life that you became a member in the year when we had the first lady president. Apart from today being like a rite of passage to a member, for some of you it means promotion or financial reward at your workplace for becoming a member. And that's a good thing. One advantage of being a member is that you are helping to increase our numbers in the institution. And as the older date goes, there is strength in numbers. And so you are helping to strengthen the institution. You are also making sure that engineers have a future. With high numbers, the institution can strengthen members by speaking on their behalf. And the powers that be will listen. While checking the web during the week, I read this quote attributed to one Will Rogers. And I think I must quote it here because it fits in our discussion. It says, in quotes, 
A man only learns in two ways. One by reading, and the other by associating with smarter people. Unquote. I believe this institution is full of smarter people who are worth associating with. Otherwise, we won't be here. It is a grouping of like minds. The Ghana Institution of Engineers also gives you the free opportunity to network. I will advise you to network seriously across ages. Some of us are old, some of us are young. Because in this world, you never know when you will need somebody, especially when a new professional opportunity turns up. If it is possible, find a mentor, especially in your field, who you can approach. It is not likely that you can find a mentor on day one. What it means is that you should make yourself visible at the institution's meetings, training seminars, conferences, etc. Meet as many people as you can. Also, we engineers are in our elements when we are doing calculations. But I'm sure that this working life is full of other aspects that you require to survive. And these include skills that are not often taught in the engineering schools. Some of these skills are entrepreneurship. You might not think about it now, but I'm sure in a few years' time, some of you might be thinking about setting off on your own. And then it becomes very important. You know, doing calculations alone, you know, when engineers get calculations, then they forget about everything. Money doesn't matter. <laughs> but you'll find out when you set off on your own that it matters and how to even chase your, your, your bills is very important, and sometimes more important than the work that you're doing. You can learn these at short courses, which the institution is always organizing. Even training in the use of modern softwares, the writing of algorithms, take advantage of offers made by the institution. There are many more advantages, but I cannot keep on talking as if today is my day. It is yours. So let me stop here. However, the institution will also require that you also help out. Remember that you, because you are younger, the younger ones will listen to you better than the rest of us. So you can volunteer to talk to graduate members and tell them of the need to join the institution. Likewise, student members should know why they have to become graduate members after school and progress on from there. So you can also become a mentor to some younger aspiring engineers. Do advocacy work for the institution. You may also become their spokesman, spokesperson, sorry, spokesperson for the institution so that whatever, wherever possible, we can fashion some rules to suit them as an advantage for the young ones. There is a council that runs our August body. You can volunteer to work on one of the many committees. By that, you will learn how the institution works. And I'll give you an example. Years ago, I had the honor of working with Madam President in the Publications Committee. And during that time, we only produced black and white uh, newsletters because it was easier and cheaper to make. We changed that to color, but kept the cost manageable. I'm sure you can do better in the advent of the computer and the paperless world. Remember that you cannot grow in the engineering world if you do not serve. Outside the institution, you can also plan to rise into national office by going into active politics. There are so few engineers up there, and that accounts for the perception that engineers appear anonymous in national life. I can recall a few. Honorable Osafo Mafo, senior minister, and engineer Uso Adiubi, deputy minister at Ministry of Roads and Highways. 
but for every one of our own, there will be at least 10 lawyers and a, an equal number of teachers. Let's take a cue from China. Many of the top members of their governing body are engineers, including, including President Xi Jinping, who is a chemical engineer. But wherever of your future leads you, remember that you must work as hard as you can, but in an ethical way. This is only a word to the wise. So let us congratulate ourselves for making it this far. But let us also remember that there is more to life ahead. So make use of your time. Congratulations to you all.